on another epic episode of the Hyper Anomalous Esoteric Research Organization podcast, also known as Hero Paranormal, broadcasting from spacewolfresearch.com in the Uinta Basin of Utah, the ranch that shares a fence line with the old Bigelow Ranch. My name is Ryan, the anomalous ambassador of the airwaves, bringing you a heck of an episode today. Before we get to it, If you haven't been over to happinessmedical.com, please check it out. There's a product over there that supports the podcast. My wife invented it, created it, formulated it, brought it to market, did all the hard work and heavy lifting. She's obviously the brains in the operation, but it supports the podcast, so I'm going to pitch it. Besides that, it's a great product. It's known as Spice Natural Bronze. It is the first all-organic Bronzer to technologically infuse aloe vera, coconut oils, and other all-organic ingredients into a hydrating and moisturizing cream that will get you through the winter months, keeping your skin happy, far from chafy, very hydrated and moisturized while keeping that color from the summer. Great product. Head on over, pick yourself up a tube, Happiness Medical. Also, if you haven't been over to HeroParanormal.com, you're missing out. Ton of content over there. Go on over, check it out. For the price of a cup of coffee a month, you can access all the content behind the paywall. Whole enchilada, bunch of it. You won't regret it. In addition, if you're listening via YouTube, please do me the solid to like, share, and subscribe to the podcast. If you subscribe to the podcast, it will help me break through the algorithm of control. I will most likely never be monetized on YouTube for a variety of reasons, especially the topics I cover and the truth. But if you subscribe, like, and share the podcast, it will help me break through. The shadow ban is real. Okay, let's get to it. On this day, December 28th, back in 1981... A gentleman named G.W. Schoen and two others were talking outside a stable on a farm in Westminster, Maryland, when they saw a grayish black object flying east to west against the wind and below the clouds at a thousand feet. It was shaped like a light bulb. It had visible ribs, dark black lines. It climbed slowly and gradually disappearing from sight. Now, this is an interestingly lit UAP that nowadays might be classified as a possible Tic Tac. You know, it's kind of light bulb shaped, yet not, doesn't seem to have any obvious propulsion, has dark lines, it's sort of that whitish medium gray color. The light on it was a yellow light or a gold light. And its overall shape was sort of uh, cylindrical or tubular. Was it a Tic Tac? Some are guessing that it may have been. Keep in mind, this was 1981. That was quite a while ago. I mean, we are almost in 2024. And if you want to talk about how long ago this was, this was 43 years ago, more or less, that we were seeing things similar to what our military pilots are seeing and talking about now. So what could this technology be? No one knows for sure, 
But I can tell you this. This year, almost 2,000 people in Maryland have reported seeing something unexplained in the sky. This is over the past two decades. Commonly, these objects have been called UAPs now. They used to be UFOs. They're getting tons of attention from the government. And Maryland seems to be a hotspot. Unidentified aerial or anomalous phenomena seem to defy explanation. Keep in mind that there have been hundreds of reports from Maryland. You can follow these on the National UFO Reporting Center website. In fact, some of them have duration of over 15 minutes. It's common that the witnesses or observers recognize these things as being anomalous, which is why they report them. Now, keep in mind, think of the droves of people who aren't reporting them. The ones who report them are a minority. And while the experts disagree about what exactly these things are, they do agree that there shouldn't be any stigma about reporting them. So please, people, keep reporting these things. We're finding out that all kinds of people have held back. In fact, many of them are even celebrities who have seen these strange things in the sky and only now coming out about it. One of them is Kurt Russell, who has spoken about the Phoenix Lights experience that he had. And, you know, this was something that was attacked by Ben Hansen and some others who know their stuff. But yeah, there's a variety, a variety of celebrities who have seen UAP, UFO, and only now are they coming out about it. Keep in mind, there's also been celebrities who have come out about witnessing Bigfoot. It, it's, it's a pretty, you would think that this is like a minority of the population, but when even celebrities are coming forward and seeing that they're seeing this anomalous stuff, you know there has to be something to it. It's a, a little bit unsettling. In fact, there have been a lot of people lately saying that they've seen the Black Knight satellite. Now, they're not alone. I've had people out at Space Wolf Research, and we've seen something similar, but it could not have been. Well, you never know, do you? It looked just like it. We did get footage of it. We got photos. We got video. We got everything. So what in the world is the Black Knight satellite? Many have purported for years that it may be extraterrestrial in origin, but basically... It's a satellite, or something watching us, right, from some sort of orbit, but yet it also has means of propulsion when necessary. It's come to be named the Black Knight because of its appearance. It literally looks like a Black Knight in the sky. And of course, I mean a Black Knight from, like, King Arthur's Court, something you would see on Game of Thrones, not just a dark evening. So, yeah, it's an interesting satellite if it is in fact a satellite others have alleged it's more of a craft truth is nobody knows exactly and people have been seeing it for a long long time in fact nikola tesla saw it all the way back in 1899 and i should clarify it wasn't a true to form sighting but he saw representations of it his towers radio towers began receiving a transmission Nikola Tesla believed that this may be proof of life. Life that's not us. In fact, he said, and I quote, I believe numbers are being used for communication because numbers are universal. He believed these transmissions he was getting from literally space might be non-humans or non-human intelligences. Something very similar to the Black Knight satellite theory. Now, the Black Knight is not the only one. Or maybe it is something that changes form. Others have called this a muamua. And although it is more the size of a loaf of French bread and looks like one, these may be similar, possibly connected, but basically have a similar function in the eyes of theorists who believe these may have telltale signs 
of non-human intelligence and fingerprints from somewhere else. And I'm not talking about just your weekend warrior guy that's looking up at the sky, no. I mean scientists from MIT, every major college you can imagine, and physicists, as well as those who study and follow quantum dynamics. The list is long. In fact, many experts agree that one or two non-human artificial satellites are going around the Earth. According to Donald Kehoe of NICAP, scientists working at White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico knew about this. And he's not the only one. Others have purported various scientists being aware of these objects going around us. Are they observing us? Are they monitoring us? What are they doing? Even NASA, who many believe you can never get a straight answer out of, in fact, they say it stands for never a straight answer, NASA, science, and scientists have explored this. In fact, they claim the first known interstellar object to visit our so solar system, I can't talk today, solar system, is Amuamua. They claim it is the first confirmed object from another star to visit our solar system. This interstellar interloper, as they call it, seems to be cigar-shaped, rocky, somewhat reddish, and the object was named Amuamua by its discoverers which means a messenger from afar arriving first in Hawaiian. Now, this is where things get really wild. According to NASA, who I'm not getting behind their evidence or their estimations, but this is official NASA documentation. They say that Oumuamua is up to one quarter mile, in other words, 400 meters long, highly elongated, and perhaps 10 times as long as it is wide. Now, where are they getting their information? Apparently, it's from aspect ratio. And while its elongated shape is quite surprising, and unlike objects seen in our solar system, they say it provides new clues into how other solar systems form. Observations claim that it may be wandering through our solar system, through our star system. And it may have been doing this for hundreds of millions of years before it ever came here. So immediately after its discovery, urgency for viewing it from ground-based telescopes seemed to be key. Now, the interstellar object, Oumuamua, is at the center of a lot of research. And I quote, this is from Karen Meech, who leads a team of astronomers looking at this situation. She says, and I quote, this unusually big variation in brightness means that the object is highly elongated, about 10 times as long as it is wide, with a complex convoluted shape. We also found that it had a reddish color similar to objects in the outer solar system and confirmed that it was completely inert without the faintest hint of dust around it. Now these properties seem to at least provide some information that it's dense and that it may have metals in it. The fact that it's not covered in dust is interesting and that it's been roaming for hundreds of millions of years is a little unnerving. Maybe this is why SpaceX and so many other space corporations, as well as NASA, do so many launches so often. Apparently, at least two satellites or objects rotating around our planet are not ours. Maybe we're keeping tabs on what they're doing. Just theorizing here. Now, satellites usually stick to a cyclical schedule something you can bank on, the calculations, the mathematics add up, and you can know when to expect it. However, it's not like that with the Black Knight satellite, and it may be because it may have propulsion we are unaware of. As far as Oumuamua, I'm not sure. 
But the absence of dust on a Muamua tells us that it can move fairly quickly and also has been around a long time. So maybe these objects have propulsion that we are just unaware of. The Pentagon has historically been super aware of this fact and was super sketched out for quite some time that the Black Knight might be something along the lines of a secret spy satellite, maybe from Russia. Now, it's not just the Pentagon that's worried about this type of stuff and military. We know Northrop Grumman has tracked it, although their findings have been kept extremely top secret. That was sometime in the 60s. They tracked and filmed and photographed the satellite. Again, none of that has seen the light of day. The Smithsonian Observatory out of Cambridge, Massachusetts, also has tracked it. And they said it was a very bright satellite and that stations around the world were asked to help track it. So everybody has this on their radar, so to speak. Now, things have kind of more or less been the same for quite some time as far as tracking objects that are not ours, that are revolving around the planet. Congress passed the Defense Policy Annual Bill just recently. This week, in fact. And we are placing plenty of funds into researching these objects in outer space, but also researching inner space. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, it turns out, if you believe many of the writings of remote viewers, such as Ingo Swan, and many of the remote viewers in the Stargate project, then you know the mind is able to basically jump around. And what I mean by jump around is to different places throughout space and time, because space and time seem to not exist when it comes to remote viewing. So there are other ways to travel. It doesn't have to be nuts and bolts. Spacecraft. Now, the recent bill that went through Congress did say that, and it had a lot of things, it said a lot of things, but one thing that stood out to me is a quarter of a century can go by and some of these things will come out. They will leak some of this stuff out to the public. So I guess if we hold our breath for 25 years, we might find something out. I will be an old, old man by then. But at least there's some light at the end of the tunnel. Now, talking about travel, slips in time, and being able to traverse the space-time continuum, things get a little bit interesting. Because it's not just remote viewers who can do this. We have gurus who have recalled being able to connect and contact or have experiences or encounters with strange beings who seem to have come from other places, maybe other dimensions. Many organizations and institutes have discussed this for quite some time how you can eventually get the ability to do these things, travel out of the body, have what they call, quote-unquote, astral travel, or OBEs, out-of-body experiences. In fact, many of the top organizations are now moving into the fold of consciousness studies. This seems to be the final frontier, the mind, that is. It's not space necessarily, it may be inner space, the human mind, which is truly the final frontier. What's even wilder is that consciousness studies seem to be showing us that it's not just out-of-body experiences and astral travel, these journeys out of the body that are possible, but consciousness studies may hold the key to immortality, understanding that there is life after death. So this begs the question, are advanced, ancient, possibly alien technologies revolving around our earth and monitoring our consciousness? Well, anything is possible. We've had 
Pilots, as well as astronauts, claim that they've seen objects flying around at altitudes they could not attain in ways that seemed out of this world. Why would these objects be doing these things? Well, one thing's for certain. As these sightings seem to pile up over the years with eyewitness testimony, servicemen seeing these things, and radar to back up their claims, the preponderance of evidence is pointing in the direction of a very real non-human intelligence with technology we do not understand. Now, when it comes to the Black Knight satellite, a researcher from Scotland named Duncan Lennon researched, investigated, and analyzed a bunch of data gathered mostly by Norwegian scientists on the Black Knight satellite. Lennon went through everything and found what he described as a map, a map he made from the patterns of the sightings, a map which showed a star system, a star system which showed a star within it slightly off kilter. Well, why would a star be off kilter? And which star was it? Arcturus, the brightest star within the constellation that was focused on, was off center. Enough off center that he had to reverse the patterns, compare it with patterns gathered by other French scientists, and what he found was astounding. It appeared that this map of stars was definitely timed differently than originally expected. And it was a map from the past. But just how long ago? According to his shocking findings, the Black Knight satellite has been here since 11,000 B.C. Thousands upon thousands of years. So what is it doing? Well, some claim, including Lennon, that there was an actual message. And it explained that it was an actual race of people who lived near this constellation. However, this is where the hodgepodge of different theories come to mind. I'll read you that message shortly. However, the Black Knight has been roaming around nearly 13,000 years, and some claim it is to spy on humans. So why would it be spying? Some claim that it has something to do with the Illuminati. So let's cut to the chase. It's been more than 120 years since the Black Knight was first recorded. And those who subscribe to a variety of conspiracy theories talk about extraterrestrial spacecraft in and around it, and the possibility that if it is something that is being covered up by our government and NASA, then it is something that is all about other life forms, aliens, and the Black Knight theory relates to radio signals like the one I was discussing. So what was the message that was sent, according to Lennon? Let me read you this message. The message begins, Our home is Epsilon Buotis, which is a double star. We live on the sixth planet of seven, coming from the sun which is the larger of the two. Our sixth planet has a moon. Our fourth planet has three moons. Our first and third planets each have one moon. Our probe is in the position of Arcturus. It's a jaw-dropper and pretty far-fetched, but that is what is claimed. And I should note that this is not nearly the most far-fetched of claims. At least this one's done by someone who is researching the scientists, someone who is peer-reviewing other scientist information and coming up with a report, and a very interesting one at that. 
some of the other conspiracies are even way more wild. In fact, Mail Online published a story on March 21st, 2017, whose title was An Alien Satellite Set Up More Than 12,000 Years Ago to Spy on Humans Has Been Shot Down by Elite Soldiers from the Illuminati, UFO Hunters Claim. I'm sure you can guess where it went from there. And yeah, they're talking about these objects going around our planet. So, what are these non-human, for lack of a better word, satellites doing? Well, since the existence of these was first recorded, those who believe that it is extraterrestrial in nature believe that there is evidence that it may be, in fact, monitoring us for possibly nefarious reasons. Now, some of the strangest imagery to ever come out of the space shuttle program was called the STS-88 images, which have turned into a growing body of quote-unquote evidence for conspiracists. NASA claims that they are nothing more than debris. However, when the STS-88 took photos of a strange object, many believe it really did confirm the existence of the Black Knight satellite. Because of Nikola Tesla's radio wave transmissions, other researchers pointing out the fact that there seemed to be signals in the cosmos, and more, on April 11th, 1960, astronomers began the first scientific experiment that would search for extraterrestrial life. Project Ozma began its search looking for radio signals for alien life. And back to Duncan Lunnan, he's not alone. A lot of people believe that we have something along the lines of delayed echoes, which many have overlooked and which were sent by an alien space probe. Duncan still has faith that there is an extraterrestrial reason that these echoes are coming through, and that extraterrestrials are the explanation for his findings and the recordings of others as well. Here's the kicker. If the long-distance extraterrestrial echoes were deliberately produced, there's a slight glitch in the system. And that is that they stopped in 1975, the year I was born. Now, the strange part is people continue to photograph and video something that looks like the Black Knight satellite, something that matches those STS-88 images. In fact, whatever it is people are catching seems to be massive, weighing close to 15 tons and is about the size of a large tanker truck. And a muamua is even larger. And now one of the wildest theories that I tend to like the most. And that is follow the textbooks. There are tons of ancient books, ancient texts, writings, quite literally in stone, which depict alien-like technologies, advanced, exotic technologies. And if that's the case, there is the possibility that this is an ancient technology of our ancestors, which is still functioning, for whatever purpose, in the cosmos. Many ancient texts do, in fact, describe a large black object orbiting our planet. Some ancient texts even depict it as possibly a form of a library DNA system, something that has DNA samples, genetic material from the past, something like Noah's Ark, but from 
a genetic standpoint, something that has maintained the DNA of past entities which lived on this planet. And it's there because there was a cataclysm. And this was a way to protect this DNA, this genetic material. In the different ancient texts, it has various names, but among them is, quote-unquote, the Dark Ark. The issue with this theory is, of course, that we have the technology at this point to probably go up and engage with the Black Knight satellite or with Amuamua, and we can probably extract anything that is within them if we wanted to. The question is, have we? Is it possible we have gone up and checked them out in detail, gotten inside them? We know the inner workings. We know what secrets are held by these objects. And maybe, just maybe, this is something that the populace isn't ready to hear. Maybe we know the secrets not only of the past, but possibly of the entities and the genetic makeup of some of those living beings which stored or saved their DNA or genetic material in this alleged theory. If we did gather this genetic material, this DNA, what could we possibly gain from bringing it back? For those who say absolutely nothing, I want to bring up a particular point. That there is a startup which has now become quite literally a fully engaged biological de-extinction corporation. And the CIA is one of the major investors. It's called Colossal Biosciences. And they are interested in fixing the problem of extinction. How would they go about doing that? Well, according to them, by combining the science of genetics with the business of discovery. They are trying to bring back the woolly mammoth so it can walk upon the tundra once again. And they are trying to take the economies, as they call them, of biology and healing through genetics to new heights. They are after reawakening parts of the earth that have long since gone dormant. And they're doing it through DNA, the rebuilding of DNA, a functional application of gene editing technology CRISPR technology, and bringing back megafauna and other creatures that have had measurably positive impacts on our fragile ecosystems. Now, what about the creatures which did not have positive impact on our planet? I'm assuming that it would be a take what you want and leave the rest scenario. And I'm not saying that Colossal Biosciences is connected with outer space technology and the gains that would come from getting genetic material off of these purported objects. However, the science of genetics and the business of discovery seems to be alive and well. And I'm sure that there are plenty of government programs and projects that are doing similar sciences. In fact, as I said, the CIA is one of the major investors in colossal biosciences. Now, some say it is more far-fetched that a muamua, meaning a messenger that reaches out from the distant past, that's what it translates to in Hawaiian. Many claim that a muamua would be less likely to carry things like genetic DNA. However, it is 
a massive cigar cigar shaped object that has been tumbling about and looks much like it may have been an alien spacecraft sent to investigate Earth. A new paper by researchers at the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics raise the possibility that the elongated dark red object, which is 10 times as long as it is wide and traveling at speeds of 196,000 miles per hour, might have, and I quote, artificial origin. These researchers claim that going forward, it's important that we should search for other interstellar objects in our skies, because some others may also have originated elsewhere. Where things really start to get twisted is the reality that some of this alien life may be artificially intelligent. In other words, we've assumed that if we ever come in contact with aliens, that they will be biological. However, if it's taken more than 4 billion years for intelligent life to emerge on Earth, then it's possible that other planets have taken even longer. We may be near the end of our evolution and therefore not have the technological ability to maintain our survival into the next time frame. However, if we are visited by quite literally an inorganic intelligence, then our species will just be a blip on the map in the long-term scope of things. So the question is, are aliens more likely to be flesh and blood, like us? Or is it more likely, if you look and calculate the numbers, that they are something more artificial, something like an alien artificial intelligence? And if they are something more like artificial, more robotic, then what would they really be like? How would we really know if they were alien? How could we see them, detect them on our radar? How would we know what we were dealing with? We wouldn't. NOIs, or non-organic intelligences, would have very little in common with us. They would not be afraid of the same things. They would not need the same things. The truth is they would be completely different from us and probably interested in an entirely different array of items, situations, and experiences than we would think even existed. They may have brains that are more silica-based or silicone, much like a computer. And their intentions, well, who knows? They might act and think about different things. Maybe they're interested in understanding something like cattle. And quite literally, this is why we have the entire cattle mutilation enigma. If you don't understand your adversary, it may be because your adversary is not interested in the same things as you are. These entities might be more like something that's been hibernating for billions of years. And when it arrives here, it's interested more in cattle than humans. Because maybe we don't survive. Maybe the cattle do. They might express this in different ways. And they might want to understand why bovine entities did survive and why humans did not. They could be probes from the future coming back. They could be probes from the past coming forward. But whatever they are, the truth is we probably can't assess 
what significance they have in our reality. These electronic, non-organic intelligences might seem to not have the same consciousness as we do. They might not see the same beauty as we do. And they might be interested in completely different things. One thing is for sure. These anomalous objects that are coming through our skies may be nothing, nothing like what we expect. And until we know where they're from, why they're here, and what they might be doing, it's best that we get ready to expect some surprises on the horizon. Keep our minds open, keep our eyes to the skies, feet on the ground, but not forget to take a look around. If you haven't gone over to heroparanormal.com, please check it out. There's a bunch of content over there. Also, if you'd like to support the podcast, you can go to happinessmedical.com. There's a product over there that supports the podcast. My wife invented it, created it, brought it to market. She did it all. And it's a great product. Keeps your skin extremely hydrated and moisturized throughout the winter months while keeping that amazing color you had in the summer. And it's the first all-natural, organic, hydrating, moisturizing lotion and bronzer to technologically infuse aloe vera, coconut oils, and other all-organic ingredients in a magical composition that you will not regret purchasing. The best part is, it supports a podcast. Maybe you can buy a tube for your significant other. If they like it, say, hey, you won't believe where I got this. Come listen to this podcast. Again, you can get that over at happinessmedical.com or you can just email me directly at p-a-z-l-u-m-i at gmail.com and I can send you a link where you can purchase it. And last but definitely not least, if you're listening via YouTube, do me the solid, like and share, but most importantly, subscribe to the podcast. I will most likely never be monetized on YouTube for a variety of reasons, but if you subscribe to the podcast, that will help me break through the algorithm of control. The shadow ban is real. Take care.